G'day guys, today we've got everyone's favourite exam topic, proving trigonometric identities. So we've got these two problems here which were from the same exam, so as you can see it's worth 7 marks, so if you can knock this over quickly, it's an easy 7 marks in the bag. So the trick with trigonometric identities guys is knowing all the moves, and the only way you can become fluent in all the tricks and moves that you have to do to become fluent in these particular problems is through practice. So there is no magic bullet, you've just got to go through many, many problems and over time you'll just get more and more fluent at what you have to do. So without further ado, let's get on to these two problems here. So for part A, we've got 1 over cos squared theta equals 1 plus tan squared theta. Now I'm going to start with the right hand side. And what I'm going to first do guys, is I'm going to rewrite this 1 as simply cos squared theta over cos squared theta. And then I'm going to rewrite this tan squared theta as sine squared theta over cos squared theta, because I know that tan is sine over cos. Now from here, guys, I'm going to write them both on the same base. So I'm going to have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta all divided by cos squared theta. And here, guys, hopefully you can recognize that this part at the top here is our Pythagorean identity. So the Pythagorean identity states that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is always equal to 1. So I can substitute cos squared theta plus sine squared theta for 1, and hopefully you guys will see where I'm going with this. And I leave my denominator as it is, and you can see here guys that this is now equal to the left hand side. And that's part A done. So when I talk about tricks or moves that you have to feel comfortable doing, in the case of part A to this problem, I feel like the move is knowing to rewrite 1 as cos squared theta on cos squared theta. Not a very obvious move to start with, but as you do more and more of these problems, you'll realise that this is a good go-to to try and solve these. Now on to part B, where we have sine of 2 theta minus 2 cos cubed theta sine theta is equal to 2 sine cubed theta cos theta. Now for part B, I'm going to be working on the left hand side and trying to make it equal to the right hand side. So let's start with writing down our left hand side. Now what the first thing I'm going to do here guys is I'm going to rewrite sine of 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta. So this is a basic trigonometric identity. Now from here guys, I'm going to separate this second trigonometric function by basically changing the cos cubed theta into cos squared theta cos theta. So this is like writing x cubed as x squared times x. So hopefully it'll be obvious to you guys that we can factorize this function by 2 sine theta cos theta. And what's going to be inside the bracket here is 1 minus, and what do we have left on this side? We just have cos squared theta. Now, we have the Pythagorean identity again popping its head up. So what I can do is I'm going to rewrite this Pythagorean identity here, where we have sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. And what I can do is I can put this into here. So what I'll get is 2 sine theta cos theta, and rather than writing 1 minus cos squared theta, I'm just going to put sine squared theta. Now from here, if I multiply into that bracket, I'm going to get 2 sine squared times sine is sine cubed cos theta, which, guys, is equal to the right-hand side. And that's part B done. So in part B, guys, the moves that are worth noting are the transformation of sine of 2 theta into 2 sine theta cos theta, as well as the rewriting of cos cubed theta as cos theta cos squared theta. Now, if you can identify these two moves in any trigonometric identity proof, you'll be well on your way to figuring these ones out. So that's it for this video, guys. If it helped, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. I put new videos out all the time on a variety of topics. But getting back to trigonometric identities, there is no magic bullet, as I described earlier. You're just going to have to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. But if you can get your head around them, it's worthwhile to note that in exams, you're going to get seven marks for not doing too much. So I hope the video helped, guys. Make sure you keep enjoying your maths, and I'll see you again soon.